Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christy, uh, otherwise known as Carmen Lee. And today is December 31st, <laughs> 2023. Uh, 2023 has been an experience and um, that's how we're going to leave 2023. It has been an experience. But yeah, today I wanted to come at you with a um, kind of 2023 wrap up. I did a previous video where I was kind of talking about what I hope to finish for 2023. And um, <laughs> after going back and watching that video, um, it was very, I was very hopeful. <laughs> I will say I was very hopeful, which is cute. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I didn't do um, an initial like everything I hope to do in 2023 video, but I did keep track of it. Uh, friends of mine and I did a kind of 2023 bingo of all of the things that we hope to accomplish for this year just so that we could kind of get some little wins here and there and hopefully get a bingo of course um but that bingo kind of talked about everything i hope to accomplish in my entire life um or i guess across my entire life for 2023 and not just author things. And so I'm not going to show that just because it is a little bit more private than I think I want to talk about for this channel. Um, but I did kind of sit down and go through all of the things that um, I hope to accomplish for 2023 as far as writing went and being an author went. Um, also kind of some highlights that happened for this year, some things that I had never even thought about happening, um, which was really cool. Um, a few kind of disappointments of things that either I hoped 2023 would bring um, and didn't, or just things that happened that kind of came out of left field, um, and things I learned for 2023 because you know, really that's the whole thing. It's just learning and growing and figuring out what works for you and what doesn't. So to start us off, things I hope to accomplish in 2023, I had um, just a few things really that I hope to accomplish for 2023. Um, one of them included getting an audiobook deal for my Coffee Shops of Love series. Um, another was getting a second book deal. Um, if you watch my pre previous videos, then you know at the end of 2022 is when I got my agent and my three book deal with Afterglow Books and Harlequin. And so 2023, I was really hoping to get some writing done, get some proposals and some submissions done and get a second book deal. Um, I also really needed to upgrade my laptop, which I thankfully did. <laughs> I, uh, at the end of 2022, I was working off of a, an old um, gaming uh, PC that um, I had had for years. And so I'm, when it comes to electronics, I'm not one that tries to keep up with the latest gadgets. <laughs> I am still rocking my iPhone 8 Plus, even though I think we're on 15 now. Um, and so to the point that my friends and family all kind of joke about how, you know, I am always behind when it comes to phones and computers and cameras and all of the things. But I'm also very much just like, if it doesn't, if it still works, I'm just going to keep using it. Um, but I did need to upgrade my laptop because it had gotten to the point where it was randomly shutting off. It was giving me the blue screen of death. And I was so afraid I was going to lose all of my writing. And you know, just like any other author or writer, I have a folder of like half finished thoughts and synopses and a few um, novellas and novels that I've started and maybe either never finished or even if I finish them, I, you know, they're just stories that I don't know will ever see the light of day, but I don't want to delete them. And so I was terrified I was going to lose that. So I did end up getting a new laptop um, at the beginning of 2023, once I got my first advance after signing my contracts in 2022, which was really cool. And then I also had three releases, um, one novella, one short story in an anthology, and one novel in, in a series that I've already started as an indie author. And so I wanted to get all of those released. And so 
yeah, let's talk about the highlights. So of those three that I wanted to get released, all of them did. <laughs> um, so Changing Spaces was released in May of 2023. It is a novella um, in a kind of shared uh, progressive small town with other amazing LGBTQ plus authors. And so I was super excited about that. It had been, I think, about two years in the making just because I didn't have time um, in 2022 to put that no uh, novella out. But it was released in 2023 and I had a great time with that novella. I also released book two, Passion Over Pride, in my Dumont Siblings series. It is an indie series that I started, I believe, in 2021. And so I was happy that I could finally get book two out. Um, when there was a moment where I thought that this book was not going to happen. Um, it happened, it was because my... My brand new laptop that I had bought in January, um, I had gone on a trip to San Francisco in June um, with some author friends of mine and to kind of do some research and sadly spilled sparkling cider. And I'm not kidding. There was no alcohol involved. This was sparkling cider. And I spilled it all over and my computer went kaput on the last day of the trip. So... Um, I did lose about 40,000 words of that manuscript that I had rewritten and revised. And so it was a mad dash to get that done because pre-orders were already up. And so I thankfully got it done. My editor, Kai, was amazing about working with me with... Uh, it was just kind of a it, like the experience that you never want to have when you have a book coming out of just not hitting the deadlines because of things that were out of your control. And so thankfully that book came out. Um, book three is in the works. Uh, I have not put a pre-order up for that. I think I'm a little... Um, <laughs> I'm a little traumatized now about putting that pre-order up for book three. So uh, I'm not 100% sure when book three is going to come out. I don't know if I'm going to make it a 2024 thing or a 2025 release. So, um, but I will let you guys know when I plan on having book three ready. The last thing that I released this year was a short story and an anthology that I have read for the past, I don't know how many years. Um, I have a short story out called Follow You Down. It's in the Best Women's Erotica Volume 9. And I I'm, I'm, I love this, this, this short story. It's so spicy and sapphic and it was just kind of an indulgent story to write. I'm just going to be completely honest. It was all indulgent. Like as soon as the call came out for stories for this, I was just like, yes, I know exactly what I'm going to write. Um, and I did, I think I finished it and maybe a couple of weeks just because it was just right there, like sitting right there in my brain. And I was just like, yes, yes, yes. Um, and so, yeah, I sent it off to some of my friends to kind of beta for me because it was a short story and they loved it. And they were like, oh yeah, this is it. And so that came out in December and yeah, it's so great. I mean, all of the stories in there are amazing. There are so many talented authors who contributed stories for this year's anthology. And so you should definitely go pick it up. So another highlight includes having a cover reveal. <laughs> I was super excited when I got the cover for this book and when I was finally allowed to announce it. It was so great. There was so much great feedback from so many different people and authors who I have on my bookshelf, who I read religiously. And so um, it's my traditionally published debut with Afterglow Books. It is about a rivals to lovers, second chance romance between um, two high school bowling coaches who have to coach their team to victory within six months. This is the book that I got my agent and my three book deal with. And I wrote this book. It was another one of those books that just like sits in your brain. And I just sat down and banged this book out, I think within three to four months. Um, my author friends, we have a, we're, we're in a group called Word Makers and um, we're, we all tend to write really late at night. And so it just kind of was like the perfect storm and the perfect people in your corner at 
just the right time for this book to come about. Um, so I was super excited. I'm super excited about this book. I can't wait for it to come out. Um, yeah, more, more to come for this book. So along with that, I did finish the manuscript for book two in that three book deal with Afterglow Books, and it is with my editor now. I have not gotten my um, dev edits back just yet. I'm assuming I'll get those in the beginning of 2024. And so I'll talk about that in another video about what I hope to accomplish for 2024. Um, I also we also started the conversation around the cover for that book. And so we don't have a um, release date just yet, but I'm super excited just because, I mean, the cover for book one was like amazing. So I can't wait to see what the cover for book two is going to be. I also finished the proposal for book three in that series, which is the final book in that series. Um, and so so for that, I essentially um, wrote the synopsis, kind of a pitch in the first chapter, sent it off to the editor, and they went back and forth. I think we had a couple of weeks where we were kind of going back and forth with some of the details about that proposal um, and the story itself, and then it was accepted. So I have not started writing book three just yet. Um, I will start in 2024 for writing book three, um, getting that drafted to get it to my betas, and then do some revisions and get it to my editor. Um, but yeah, thankfully I, I can push that out to 2023 and work on some other things. Final highlight of 2023 since this kind of this happened this month. Um, I signed a deal for a super secret sapphic project. Um, I can't obviously talk about it yet because it hasn't been announced, but the contracts have been signed. And so I was... <sighs> I had wanted to have another book deal in 2023, but I did also have so many other things that I was writing. And so I was just like, I don't, I, we weren't able to go out on submission with anything for 2023. And so, um, having this come just kind of like has revitalized me to be completely honest, because for a little while I was getting a little down on myself, um, for not finishing, um, a manuscript that I wanted us to go on submission with at the beginning of 2024. Um, and so this really has kind of helped me get my confidence back. Um, because yeah, I mean, as an author, if you don't have books come out, <laughs> people forget about you. <laughs> There were a couple disappointments that happened in 2023. Um, I think I talked about it already. My computer going kaput and, you know, I lost some of my work and some of my momentum when it came to writing because it was, number one, that computer was only about six months old and it was my first major purchase with my advance. And number two, I, I lost some work. And so thankfully it wasn't work that I absolutely needed. Um, but it did kind of set me back a, a few months. Um, also a disappointment or I hesitate to call it a disappointment because it was a great learning experience, but um, I had been auditioning for an IP project. And um, although we went, I think two rounds for the audition, um, unfortunately I did not get it. And so I was really hoping for that because I am hoping to get more IP projects. It's, it was, a great experience. It was a great learning experience. Um, and I definitely feel like I'll be more comfortable when other IP projects maybe come our way. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, I did not get it. So, um, another disappointment was, so I also write a few serials, um, through the Radish app. And unfortunately the way things happen with other um, contracts and, and contracted work I needed to finish, I had to put my series on hold. Um, I just did not have the time, the bandwidth, the mental capacity to continue them. And although I try to have things, um, I really, with my serials, I try to have um, my episodes finished two to three months in advance. That did kind of peter out because I could not obviously replenish that. So um, hopefully in 2024, I plan on restarting some of those series, uh, some serials and getting them finished for the year. 
And the final kind of disappointment for 2023 is that I did not finish my manuscript for Project KW. Um, like I said, that was the manuscript that I was hoping we would go out on submission with at the very beginning of 2024, as soon as everyone opened back up. But unfortunately, like I said, bandwidth, I just could not get it done just yet. And while it is a disappointment, I I think it was it was something good to happen to help me realize that I need to better plan out my year when it comes to my author works because I do plan on continuing to be a hybrid author, indie and traditionally published. And so I need to make sure that I'm really sitting down and planning out how I can get everything done and making sure that I don't drop the ball on anything. So some things I learned in 2023, because this really was the first year of me being a hybrid author. I was working on contracted um, things as well as working on the indie side of things. And so I think the, the major thing I learned is being realistic in my planning. Um, I am typically kind of a fast drafter, a fast writer. Um, it's just, I, I always joke that it's a facet of my ADHD that either I'm on or I'm off. And when I'm on, I am on. <laughs> and so, um, but parts of this year I was off. <laughs> and so it just didn't work. Um, some of my plans I think were completely unrealistic and I need to really work on, um, thinking about my schedule and what I can actually get done without putting too much stress on myself. I mean, things are going to be stressful anyway, because I am juggling multiple hats. Um, but I need to sit down and really think about what can I accomplish without destroying myself? <laughs> um, and, you know, think about how I can kind of separate things out so that I can continue with my serials, I can continue indie publishing, and I can ramp up traditionally publishing. Um, I also learned that I need to not stress about things that I can't control. And when it comes to being traditionally published, there are a lot of things that you cannot control, which is... Um, slightly different than indie publishing because when you're an indie publisher or an indie author, pretty much everything falls on you. You have to plan everything out. You have to schedule everything with people. You have to talk to everybody. You have to do your own marketing and do your own promoting. You know, granted, you can kind of farm some of that out depending on what your budget is. But when you're on a shoestring budget, it is all you. And so that is completely different than when you're traditionally published. Um, and so I need to definitely work on not stressing about things that are completely out of my control and actually enjoying the fact <laughs> that I don't have to control them. Um, I also realized I need to definitely give myself some downtime. Um, in 2023, I did have some downtime, but it was more forced downtime. I didn't really have a choice. And 2024, I definitely am going to be more proactive about scheduling downtime downtime for myself and making sure that I adhere to that and stepping away from the computer and stepping away from my writing um, every now and then to give myself a break, give myself a mental break. And I think the last thing and maybe the, not the biggest thing, but definitely the biggest author thing that I've learned for 2023 is that I am not a pantser anymore. <laughs> So for years, I have been able to kind of think of an idea, think of maybe one or two characters, and then just sit down at my computer and just write and it just flows out. And, you know, I, I would always have to go back and make sure that it all meshed and worked correctly. But, you know, I could just sit down and just it's all out. It's all there. It's on the page. Um, I can't do that anymore. And... <laughs> I don't know if it's because I'm now working on being a hybrid author and so I have to keep things together. I do think part of it is because I am writing more series now, whereas before I definitely was writing more standalones and particularly standalone novellas. Um, but especially when it comes to my serials, um, I have to really sit down and plan everything out. And so it's been helpful to realize that that has kind of been a shift in how I write um, and just kind of embracing it because 
I have a lot more that I plan on getting done. And so I have to, I have to write the way that it works for me now. I can't just keep thinking, well, I used to do it this way. Well, I can't do it that way anymore. It just doesn't work for me. So instead of fighting against it, I need to work with it. So yeah, that is 2023 for me in a nutshell. It's been a very interesting year. It's been a year full of some heartbreaks. It's been a year full of some major highlights. And it definitely does make me kind of curious and anxiously excited about what 2024 is going to bring. So thanks for watching my video. Thanks for coming to my channel and sticking with me on this journey of 2023. If you like what you see and you hope to see more in 2024, like and subscribe because I definitely have a lot more coming for the near future. If we could run.